Hey guys, Kevin here. If you've been wondering where my reviews for like Aim to Shield and Awkward have been, um, and why haven't I reviewed them yet and things like that, I didn't forget about them, guys. What happened is today I am restarting classic movies. Yes, today is going to be the first day of that for 2016. I basically have to start um, today, mainly because one of the movies I want to see, there's a big like Fathom event for in like April, and also I'm planning to watch a lot of movies this year, guys. I really got into it last year. I liked watching a lot last Last year, I really got into it, as you guys know. And this year, I'm planning on watching a lot of classic films and things like that. So, I'm definitely looking forward to um, doing that. And um, because of that, of course, like I said, I'm going to start classic movies. Starting off with a bit of an odd choice, but I do think it's a film that I'm happy that I started with. Um, that movie I'm going to be starting with is the 1985 um, teen, basically, uh, comedy science fiction classic Weird Science. Now, look, I know you guys are like, why are you starting with Weird Science? You guys know for the past two years, I've started with John Hughes movies. When I was, you know, in, uh, 2014, I started with The Breakfast Club, and in 2015, I started with 16 Candles. And, you know, those DVDs came in a set. This movie is in that set, and I thought it would only be fitting to do, to start with Weird Science to kind of keep that going. And, uh... I also was kind of looking forward to this movie, you know, I was definitely looking forward to seeing what it was going to be like. I knew it was going to be something different, but that was something I kind of like. I wanted to see a little bit something different, because 16 Candles of the Breakfast Club, you know, they're high school movies. They're all about high school and the trials and tribulations and things like that. They're both, you know, 16 Candles have been more of a comedy than is a drama, um... But, you know, The Breakfast Club, that that is a drama. That is, that is definitely, it's a dramedy, definitely. It is definitely a dramedy, and you definitely um, see, you know, you definitely see that with that movie. This movie, however, I definitely didn't really know what I was getting myself into. And uh, overall, guys, what I think of Weird Science, I will say, out of the three films, I do think Weird Science is the, I will say right now, Weird Science, I think, is the weakest of the three John Hughes films I have seen. Um, in this set, but it's a very fun movie, and it definitely is something that I think can be very enjoyable if you don't take it too seriously. Let's get to the plot of Weird Science, which I honestly love the plot of this movie, I really do. That's the thing that really intrigued me, just the idea of it I think is really cool, because you have these two nerds, basically, and they just, they can't get a date. They can't get a date, they're constantly getting bullied in high school, girls laugh at them, things like that. They're those two kids that they constantly talk about women, but they just can't can't get a date for whatever reason they can't get a woman to fall in love with them and one day basically we those two guys uh gary and wyatt wyatt's parents uh go away and gary decides to have the perfect opportunity by watching um frankenstein to basically make the perfect oh, actually no it's wyatt i think that has the yeah gary decides to make the uh dream woman basically and they end up creating uh, Lisa, who eventually basically is the dream woman for them, and basically she ends up doing everything they want, and, uh, kind of becomes this gene for them, that basically is a plot of weird science, so yes, the plot of this movie is pretty awesome, I definitely really did appreciate that, and that's something I was really looking forward to going into it, and I will say something I think that makes this movie really great is the cast, I think the cast here is very good, they're all really not taking it too seriously at all, and that's exactly what you need to do with this kind of movie, I'll get to that when we get to the screenplay, but, um, let's get to the two leads, Anthony Michael Hall and uh, Ian Michael Smith. First of all, Anthony Michael Hall, I think he was good in this movie, but I will admit, I thought he was a little bit, he was very funny, definitely. I thought he was very funny in this movie, especially this one scene where he gets drunk. Oh my god, he just sold it so well. He was so funny. I will admit, it was weird seeing him play this kind of role, because we saw him play in The Breakfast Club in 16 Candles. I think he did it differently here. He's clearly doing something a little bit different. This is a more grown-up Anthony Michael Hall, which I did appreciate. But I will say that I do think that he could have just been played by anyone, really. His character wasn't really something where it needed to be played by Anthony Michael Hall. I think the reason John Hughes did that is because he knew it'd be a success. You know, Anthony Michael Hall is one of his go-to actors. He used a lot of actors a lot of times, and Anthony Michael Hall was one of them. And I think he just thought, you know, Anthony Michael Hall was very good in his other two films. Why not put him in this? And... He does a great, a good job here. I'm not going to say he did a bad job. I think he did a very good job. I really enjoyed his character. Um, I thought he was really funny at points. Like I said, he had some very funny scenes. As well as Ian Michael Smith. I thought he was also very funny as Wyatt. I liked what he did in the movie. I liked the situation they got in. The chemistry between these two is 
undeniable. I mean, they really have great chemistry. You see these two as best friends. Um, you know, it's it's just a, it's a bond that can't be broken. I definitely really did appreciate that. But I also like kind of how they did try to. They didn't just do this to create the perfect woman. They wanted to do this to satisfy themselves. They wanted to do something big in their life and things like that. And I thought that was really good. I definitely really did appreciate that. And I thought that they overall did a very good job. I really did enjoy um, their characters in this movie. But without a doubt, Kelly Brock makes this movie as Lisa. She, K Kelly Lee Brock is, you know, she's what makes this movie. I mean, that's why we want to see this movie. We want to see this movie for Kelly Lee Brock. And she does a great job. Now, yes, her character is ridiculous. She's completely ridiculous. You know, this is a woman that she's seemingly perfect. She gives them wishes. She does things that she wants. She gets them into rebellious situations and things like that. But she does a great job with that. She has that seductive persona down. She has that comic tone down. I mean, what I love about Kelly Lee Brock is she's really... Here's how I can describe her, and this might be very strange. She's a more seductive, younger, um, teenage version of Mary Poppins. Very much that way. I mean, you know what? Mary Poppins is kind of practically perfect in every way. Very much like Lisa. Lisa does what she wants. Nothing bad happens to her. She's seemingly perfect. She gives the boys what they want and things go working out perfect for them. Um, but she does, you know, you don't, she doesn't really have faults necessarily, but she does take things too far. You can definitely see, but she does definitely have an agenda and I definitely really did appreciate that. I thought she was a very good character, a lot of fun to watch. And without her, I don't think the movie would be as memorable. I mean, a lot of people remember Word Science because of Kelly Lee Brock, not just because she's hot, she is very attractive, but I thought in general, she really did a great job. And her commitment to the role is, you know, something that's very important with this movie because it's a movie that, like I said, is quite ridiculous, but I think her commitment and her just doing all she could to make this movie as great as possible is really the reason why this actually didn't ever feel phoned in and actually worked very well. Uh, believe it or not, there are two actors in this movie that this was one of their first movies. Bill Paxton um, actually plays Wyatt's brother Chet, and he's one of the funniest parts of the movie, without a doubt. I mean, he is kind of the typical brother picking on Wyatt, and they go in a very odd direction with his character, but I thought he did a good job. I liked his character overall. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is also in this movie is like the bully in the beginning of the movie uh it's interesting but yeah he does end up as the bully which i thought was quite interesting the way they did that and then um you know i think overall like i said i think everyone did a pretty good job not really much to say about the other actors i think they all were pretty good there are two girls that run into like the end of the movie but I, they were also pretty good but overall i thought everyone did a really good job here definitely really did appreciate that Let's talk about John Hughes directing, because that was the thing I was most looking forward to, because one of the things I definitely will say with this movie is that I really do have to credit John Hughes. I think he did a very good job with this, because I can totally see where he's coming from. You know, he's made these movies. Everyone's expecting him to just make another teen film, and he wanted to do something different. He clearly wanted to go in a different direction. I appreciate that. I think his tone was very evident through this movie. This movie is completely self-aware. You know exactly what it's going to be, and it's not trying to be anything else. The movie also is not subtle at all. This is not at all a subtle movie. They reference things. They basically shove it in your face what it is. Sometimes I think it did get a bit too much, but I think he did a good job with basically making fun of Frankenstein. Things like that. This is a very, you know, they show Frankenstein in the very first scene of the movie. You can tell that they're, they're trying to make fun of that. You can tell they're making fun of Mary Poppins a little bit. I mean, the things that the references are just very clear what they're doing. You can tell that's what he wanted to do. But I think his tone was very good. There's really no dramatic moments in this movie. It's really just a fun movie and I did appreciate that. But it doesn't have a lot of substance to it. I definitely would say if you want a movie with substance to it, this is not really the movie for you. But I really did appreciate that. He just had fun with it and... That's why I think the movie turned out well, because he just had fun with it. Uh, the writing, I said, as well, I think was really good. My only complaint with the writing is that I do think the second half of the movie, it did get a little bit uh, too much, I think, honestly. I mean, the second half of the movie wasn't bad, but it just didn't hold my interest like the first half. The first half of the movie, when they're creating her, and she's taking them to these places, it's really great. Then when they decide to throw this party, one thing goes after another. It just it goes in some really crazy directions, and I do think the movie did get a bit too much at times, but like 
like I said, it's very self-aware. It knows exactly what it wants to be. It knows it's ridiculous. It knows it's silly. And that's something that does work very well. It's the fact that they are making fun of these things. The fact that they aren't trying to hide it. And I really did appreciate that. I also do feel this movie's a bit dated, though. I really do. I mean, there's a lot in this movie that isn't necessarily, you know, boring or anything. It's not a boring film, but I do think the movie's a little bit dated in just some of the ways it's it can come across as cheesy. Definitely, it's, it, it is very cheesy at points, but I feel like it's meant to be that way, and definitely you can tell it is definitely very cheesy. Um, it's not really all that funny, though. I will definitely say it. There are some very funny scenes in this movie, but I didn't really walk away saying this is one of the funniest movies I've seen, and the other two John Hughes movies I thought were absolutely hysterical, and this movie, I chuckled. I definitely laughed a couple times, but it wasn't as funny as I think it could have been. The jokes that hit really, really hit. That's the thing, but there aren't as many memorable jokes. It's not that memorable of, you know, it's, not, it's just the jokes aren't that memorable, and that's really my thing. The reason that I think the movie turns out so well is because of the energy and the spirit they put into this film. I mean, you can tell that they all are committed. You can tell they all want to be here, and they're all just having a great time. They're not trying to win Oscars. They're just trying to have a great time, and I really did appreciate that. Uh, the cinematography, I actually think is pretty good here. I mean, there's not really a lot to say about it, but I think one of the best scenes in the movie is them creating the perfect woman, because you kind of think about what would you do if you could create the perfect woman. I love the scene where they're talking about like her boob size and things like that. That's like one of the funniest scenes in the movie. I definitely really love that. The scene where they're creating is definitely just a great scene. I love the way that scene was done. Um, I thought that was very funny. Um, and the scenes, there are scenes like that that I definitely really did appreciate. But like I said, once they got to this party, I did think the movie just got a bit too much. But the cinematography, surprisingly, isn't actually that dated. A lot of it's very practical effects. There's this one actually very impressive montage at like the end of the film that still actually looks really good today. And I really appreciate that. And when she's granting their wishes, um, they look pretty realistic. Some of it looks really weird, definitely. I will definitely admit that some of it does look bad, um, especially something that happens to uh, uh, Wyatt's brother. I'm not going to spoil it, but something that happens to him. It just was a weird direction to take the movie, and I don't really know why they necessarily decided to do that. I feel like they it was just kind of half-assed with that. And that's my real thing. The movie doesn't necessarily have heart. Like, you care about these characters. You want them to get out of this situation. But it doesn't really go beyond them just creating the perfect woman and trying to get a girlfriend. It's really just about that. It's really just a fun movie. And I was fine with that. But I did want a little bit more. Because I know John Hughes can do better. I know John Hughes can tell a very complex story. I know he can have better written characters. And this movie kind of felt a bit half-assed. It seemed like he was trying to do something different. And it just doesn't really work for him you know John Hughes the kind of director where he needs to tell stories that are about high school and the kind of the situations you go through he's great with those kind of coming of age stories and this really isn't like that it's just a fun movie that I think you just watch if you you know if, if you just want to watch a fun movie this is definitely for you the score here is great I love the soundtrack I love the score it was a very Mary Poppins-esque uh, score sound at the very end of this movie which I really thought was funny um and then the title song Weird Science it's a great song I love the song Weird science it's very good I definitely really did enjoy it I did feel the movie was a bit too short though I mean I think some of the things in the movie started up it ended before they actually started and I when it was over I was actually pretty surprised that it was over as quick as it was because I did feel the movie could have just been a tad bit longer because I do think some things didn't go on as long as they necessarily could have but overall, guys, I would recommend Weird Science. I do think it's the weakest out of the three John Hughes movies I've seen. I wasn't necessarily disappointed by Weird Science. I just know that John Hughes can do better, and it probably is one of his weaker films. And overall, I'm going to give Weird Science a 3.5 out of 5 or a B. I would recommend you check it out. I think it's a fun movie. It's not necessarily, it's not hilarious. It's kind of just in the middle. It's something that I probably watch again if it's on TV, and I probably will enjoy more the more times I watch it. I wouldn't say go see it. I wouldn't say see it immediately because it's very different than 16 Candles of Breakfast Club. Just know it goes in some really weird directions, and it's not for everyone. Like, my mom loves 16 Candles and the Breakfast Club. She doesn't really love this movie, and I will say that. I don't think girls will really love this movie. This is a very guy film, and you have to kind of be a certain kind of person to enjoy this movie, and especially if you're a guy, then you'll really enjoy it. If you're not a guy, you probably won't enjoy this movie, which is surprising, because most of John Hughes' films cater to every age demographic. Even if you're not a teenager, they cater very well to you, and this movie really doesn't. I feel like it's made specifically for guys, and that's really it. Do I think the movie's sexist? No, I don't I don't think the movie's at all sexist. I'm saying most of the humor 
in this movie, guys will get rather than girls get. And I'm not trying to be sexist. I'm just saying that's the kind of tone the movie is. But overall, guys, that's it for my review, Weird Science. I'm happy to be starring up classic movie reviews again. Again, I know it was a weird choice to start with, but I just want to continue the whole John Hughes thing. Um... I'm going to do more classic movie reviews throughout the month, definitely, and of course, into August. I'm planning on watching a shit ton of classic movies this year, definitely, so stay tuned for that. You guys, of course, can recommend me any if there are any you want me to check out. And let me know what you guys thought of this movie. You have seen it. We'll see you guys in the next video, which will be for Ains of S.H.I.E.L.D., and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.